So hello again boys and girls, Q here. Um, today I want to talk about wind, wind management and uh, windshield solutions. And wind is such an interesting topic with motorcycling because of course it's, 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 it's what you, you know, you're out in the wind, let's just put it that way. You are out in the wind. Now if you've got a big fairing like this motorcycle does, and maybe even a taller windscreen, you can be out and have no wind at all. You can be in just this bubble of calm. But there's something kind of boring about that. On the other hand, if you have a, a naked motorcycle, which the base Royal Enfield Interceptor is, you're just getting this wind blast. And it's hitting your chest and, and your neck and your head. But as long as it's clean air, uh, you don't get buffeting. Buffeting is, is you can feel it. It's a bup, 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 bup with the wind. It's like somebody constantly punching you in the head. It's very, very uncomfortable. The other thing without any wind protection is you get a tremendous amount of wind noise. You are not going to hear your motorcycle. The only thing you're going to hear is wind howl, which is why I always wear earplugs, you know, silicon earplugs, no matter what bike I'm on. Um, but with the wind, I mean, you don't hear your motorcycle. Wind is all you hear, and, and you don't want to damage your hearing. You know, it's, it's, that's going to catch up with you sooner or later. So with this Royal Enfield, I don't want a completely naked bike. That's just me. Particularly a bike like this that you sit on top of rather than in. You know, some motorcycles, the, the seat is much lower, and you're actually behind the tank, and it's kind of a sculpted thing, and you're actually sitting in the bike. This bike you're just sitting on top of it. You're very much in the wind. So I've tried all kinds of things to figure out a windshield solution. So I have this generic windshield here and uh, it just clamps onto the handlebars but it was too tall and I was getting a lot of buffeting so I actually cut the top of this off with a Dremel. I cut the top down here and then, and then I added this uh, wind deflector, which I can control the height and the angle of this wind deflector. This worked pretty well. I also noticed, you know, I also drilled these uh, holes in here, again, just to reduce buffeting. And this system works actually pretty well, this windshield. But it, it just looks like the kind of homemade crap that it is. And that's not what I wanted. I also bought the... Um, the Royal Interceptor, the fly screen. And so here's, here's the fly screen. And uh, it's a nice little piece of kit, but it's so small, I don't think it's gonna do much of anything. And it had two brackets to hold it. Uh, spoiler alert, you can see I've actually got the brackets on here now. Uh, but, but uh, you know, if I hold this up, yeah, I cut this wire. If I hold this up to the, uh, windscreen I have on here now you can see how small this fly screen is that's not gonna do a whole lot um, so then I bought this giant windscreen over here from Slipstream and this thing is a monster it's enormous and uh, I put it on and it really slowed the motorcycle down it's uh, just such a sail out front, and it looks stupid too. So then I saw this, um, this you know, YouTube video about a guy cutting down his windshield, and he says, just do it, just take a jigsaw and do it. So I started to do it, that's why this is all taped and marked, and it immediately just cracked the bottom of this thing off and ruined it, and it was a disaster. So then I thought, well, and I bought a couple Puig windshields, by the way, too, P-U-I-G. But every time I bought a Puig, or I bought two of them, they, I open up the box and it says, oh, if you install this on your bike, you can't return it. Well, guess what? If I can't install it, if I can't try it out, I got to just return it now. So I can't, I can't buy a Puig windshield. It's just pointless. Now, this thing is kind of like some of the smaller slipstreamers. But this was called a, a Kratow or something like that. I'll put a link. This was only in the $50 range. And, but for $50, cheap Chinese stuff, 
these uh, clamps were so poorly engineered I don't know if you can see that or not but but the clamps were so poorly engineered that the barrels would not go into them so this is actually the clamps and the barrels from the slip streamer over there and then these stays are the ones that came with this cray tower or whatever it is and then like I say I have the brackets for the uh, fly screen for the Royal Enfield fly screen here and then I just drilled some holes here at the bottom and this thing is rock solid and it does a great job so this is actually a collection of parts from three different windscreens to get this solution but I've tried it and I love it I get a lot of wind I can also put a you know a little another little extender on top of this and deflect the airflow and really uh, eliminate the air but I like I like some airflow on a motorcycle that's kind of like being in the wind is what it's all about so this is a great little solution now today it's a very gray day outside and in Myrtle Beach there is a huge difference between days with sun and without because um, the sun is so hot down here 60 degrees 65 degrees with the sun out is an entirely different animal down here than 65 degrees on a gray day a gray 65 degree down here day down here is chilly um, a gray a, a sunny 65 degree day down here is on its way to 80 in a hurry so uh, but I'm gonna go ride I gotta figure out why this camera keeps turning itself off uh, but uh, yeah I just thought I'd talk about the windshield solution and but I think I think I got a good one and I can pop that cray towel off very quickly and easily I can just pop that sucker off and and stick the fly screen on there and I'm sure I'll give that a try uh, once we get to the summer weather so uh, let's go for a ride guys so guys like I say let's go for a little ride and we'll see if my camera keeps turning off mysteriously. Who knows? Who knows? I don't have the time or the patience for technology. I don't want no stinking technology. All right, here we go. So yeah, I like this setup a lot. Um, even on a cold gray day. My thermometer says it's 62 degrees Fahrenheit. And I've had this, I don't know, I've had this bike, what, a month? I've got 1,800 miles on it. So I'm really enjoying this guy quite a bit. It's hard to tell, but I think I'm getting around 50 miles per gallon. So yeah, beautiful bike. I just I just can't get over how pretty this bike is. Absolutely love that. You know, it's it's like pride of ownership. You know, when you're uh, at a stoplight and other motorcycles pull up, or when you're going by folks and you feel like you know you know for a fact that you're on a gorgeous looking motorcycle a really cool motorcycle and then on top of that to know that it's modern it's reliable um, it's got uh, a great engine stops well enough um, it's really is a nice combination I, I should never say never because I always change my mind. I'm always wrong about my intentions. And there's always another bike I want, but right now I would bet that I will never sell this motorcycle. I, I would predict that this one's uh, in the garage when, when I draw my last. And, you know, my wife or somebody can deal with it because um, this is just—it's just too pretty and too good not to not to keep. Jesus, what is it with these freaking red lights? There we go. 
you get these flashing yellows down here, which means if you can go, you can go. Which is a cool thing. I never saw those in the east. So as we get away from the water here a little bit, which is behind me, um, it should warm up a bit. We're up to 63 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, another thing I'm testing is this uh, adventure helmet, the Sedici adventure helmet I have, um, because uh, you know it's it was great for the um, excuse me, it was great great for the Kawasaki Versus X300 adventure bike, but this big beak with a lot of air, I, I wanted to test how it is. It's not that bad, really. It's okay. But uh, certainly not ideal. There's just too much, too much beak here to catch the wind. But again, I'm getting a nice clean airflow. I'm not getting buffeting, and so it's uh, it's quite tolerable. Yikes, so finally a spot where I could pull over. I was having quite a bit of trouble finding such a spot. Ah, I like this farm country out here. It just goes forever. So these are my Fly Racing uh, battery powered heated gloves. Stainless score heating technology, blah, blah, blah. And they are lovely and they work great. Got my Harley bag. I got the greatest cruise control ever. This this ten dollar little bracket. I don't know if you can see it from uh, Amazon. These things work great. Terrific uh, cruise control. Got some nice little red uh, uh, levers, brake and clutch. Very easy to install. Those those are just cheap Chinese knockoffs from Amazon as well. And power! Heated gloves! All right, let's uh, get this party rolling. Oh, if you see these uh, mirrors, these nice chrome mirrors, these are actually mirrors that I bought for uh, my uh, Goldwing, my Valkyrie. And uh, I, I used them on the Valkyrie, and then when I sold the Valkyrie, I I put the, uh, the the stock mirrors back on because I like these so much. And now, several years and a couple bikes later, I, I tried them here on the Royal Enfield, and I think they look great. I really like them, and and they're very small. You might not think they work well, and they they certainly don't work as well as a bigger mirror. But but they work. I can I can see what's going on behind me. So. Very happy with them. So boys and girls, that's about it for me. Um, I just want to say, you know, this solution, using these brackets to really hold this in, just had to drill these holes and use the screws that came with the uh, fly screen, 
What a great solution. No buffeting. Took a lot of monkeying around, that's for sure, but I'm really, really happy with this. So, guys, uh, thanks for coming along, and bye for now.